Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We've all been there. That moment, that time, when we have to say, I forgive you. And probably before we said it, we didn't know if we can get it out of our mouth. It's a challenge. Woo, it's a challenge. Forgiveness, the true Pentecost gift of the Holy Spirit, it happens for us every day. It is the understanding that the forgiveness of sins is through Jesus Christ. So what is the definition of forgive? I looked it up. To stop feeling angry. To stop being resentful towards someone for, for a mistake or a flaw or an offense or to cancel a debt. To forgive. So I looked up what psychologists said about forgiveness. Psychologists generally define forgiveness as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance towards a person or group that has harmed you. We do this regardless of whether they actually deserve it or not. Forgiveness does not mean forgetting, nor does it mean condoning or excusing the offense. Our culture, our upbringing, it teaches us and has taught us many concepts or viewpoints on forgiveness. And some of these ideas are better than others when it comes to forgiveness. Sometimes our culture teaches us that forgiveness is a gift that we give ourselves. And we are taught sometimes that forgiveness must be, must be earned. Or that forgiveness, oh, it's just a process. <laughs> if we explore forgiveness in the light of the scripture, we see that our worldly view is a little off target. First of all, when we hear that forgiveness is a gift that we give ourselves, there's a little truth to that. If we hold a grudge against someone, we begin to carry burden and bitterness in your gut. Forgiving that person releases us from that burden, that that, that knot in your stomach, that pain, that, that the headache you never had before. From a psychological standpoint, these make sense. But for us, our attitude towards forgiveness is a worldly attitude. And God's attitude towards forgiveness is a gracious attitude. In today's gospel, Peter asks, how often should I forgive my brother or sister or cousin or nephew or however they related to me? What do I do with them? And so we can almost hear the frustration in Peter's voice when, when the Lord says seven times. He says, no, 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 77 times. If someone sins against you seven times, each time you forgive them, you and I might become a little frustrated. You know, after about the 23rd time, and I got a problem with you. That's a worldly attitude. <laughs> That's not God's attitude. <laughs> and the question is, are they really sorry for what they did? since they keep doing the same hurtful thing. We, like Peter, well, how many times is too much? 
After all that forgiving, it begins to wear on you. We begin to feel like, I think they're taking advantage of me. That challenge persists when they apologize. And we say, okay, I forgive you. Our challenge is our attitude of forgiveness. Our attitude of forgiveness is to be that of Jesus Christ. We forgive as we have been forgiven. We are to forgive without, without conditions or without guarantees. We are to forgive from the heart. It is not for us to dig deep into their secret emotions and thoughts and, and to find out what makes them tick or to find out if they're truly sorry. We ask them and we are to believe them. If we begin to question their thought process or their motive, we begin to slander them. The more you hold it in, the more words you come up with that are not good words. <laughs> we have to accept that they are repentant. And then we're obligated to forgive. We forgive from the heart and we will not seek retaliation. Romans 12, 19, it says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. When we forgive, we are agreeing not to seek retribution. We are not looking for the big payback. We are agreeing not to hold a grudge. We're not going to lay in wait. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Our attitude has to be a gracious attitude, a godly attitude. We pray and we turn these issues over to the Lord because that's a better decision. And God's decisions are always for the good. When we forgive for the heart, we are giving up any right to pay them back. Look at our king in our parable this day. He says, your debt is canceled. There will be no debt collectors coming to get the money. That's a great feeling. Anybody ever had their debt removed? Yeah, after seven years of not paying it, they removed it. <laughs> By forgiving, we are removing the burden or the responsibility from the one we are forgiving. And we're not asking for conditions and we're not asking for repayment. And this is very difficult because it's, it's the total opposite of what we really want to do. Forgiveness is a gift we give ourselves. No, it is not a gift we give ourselves. It is a gift that we give to the person that we're forgiving. We are sharing the light of Jesus Christ that is within us. This is not to say that forgiveness will happen and benefit us in some ways. But that should not be our motivation. We are to think of our neighbors and their needs. We are to think of whether or not we will want someone to forgive us. Think about the most important fact is that Jesus Christ, our Lord, he wants us to forgive our brothers and sisters without any conditions, without any strings attached, and without any limitations. And how do we do that? You don't do it from a sinful heart. But you do it with the new heart created in all of us by the Holy Spirit. This new heart is strong. The new heart is loving. The new heart is willing to forgive. 
because sometimes the old heart weakens us. The old ways, they weigh us down. And then our emotions and our feelings, they become so strong, they become too strong that all we can think about is how much someone has hurt me or damaged me. Where do we get the power to forgive from the heart? With no stipulations, with, without any regrets, I forgive you. Boom, gun, done. Where do we get that power? We get that power from the cross. We look to the unlimited worth of the blood of Jesus shed for you and me and for all men and all women and all children. We are to forgive from the heart because of death. Jesus Christ has paid for all our trespasses. So how do we deal with something that seems too big to be forgiven? You can't compartmentalize forgiveness. That's the worldly attitude. We got to have a godly attitude. How do we react if we feel a neighbor's sin is more powerful than the blood of atonement? That means your heart is in a knot. That means Satan is nibbling away at you. That means you are not letting the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, rule your heart. Seventy times seven. Forgive them. And sometime in our, in our upbringing, we were taught forgiveness must be earned. There's a little truth to that. When a relationship has become strained because trust has been broken, it takes time to rebuild trust. It is very difficult to simply forgive and then carry on like nothing happened. Not going to happen. When we talk about earning forgiveness, we often imply that a person needs to show us that they have changed their ways before we will forgive them. Or he or she must make amends to convince us to forgive them. But let us think in the terms of Jesus Christ. Did he wait for us to show him that we were a changed people before he would forgive us? No. Why we were still enemies, he shed his blood for us. Why we were still lost in sin, he sent someone to baptize us with the holy washing of forgiveness. Making amends does not come before forgiveness. If we depend on making amends, we are paying for the crime. We are not receiving forgiveness. Forgiveness cancels the debt. It does not say, payment pending. It's done. It's over. It's gone. The unforgiving servant is the one who seeks repayment. Our merciful king cancels the debt forever. How often do we have the opportunity to be like our merciful king? How often can we be better with our family and with our friends and all we come in contact with? If we look at the world around us, we see people's attitude is forgiveness must be earned because we want our emotions to be ready to forgive. And the world says our emotions have to be ready. Many times we feel it is worthwhile to forgive if we get something back out of it. That is not forgiving from the heart. We cannot hold grudges. We cannot put conditions on forgiveness. And please do not get even. Why should we forgive? Because Jesus Christ shed his blood for us. 
Our forgiveness is not limited by our human heart, thank God. The price has already been paid. No matter how serious the sin committed against us, forgive us our trespasses as we have forgiven those who trespassed against us. That is why we never place conditions on forgiveness. But this acknowledges that a person repents. As I was studying and I reading, it kept bringing me back to being a repentant person. If a person does not repent and they deny that Jesus Christ died for them, there's no reason for us to forgive them. They have to be repentant. They have to accept Jesus Christ as their risen Lord and Savior. If they don't accept that, that's not a battle for us. The Lord's wrath is right there. And Jesus said, whoever sins you do not forgive, they are not forgiven. Which means that we are withholding forgiveness from the unrepentant. So they are to turn and they are to repent their sins and they are to seek forgiveness in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we are able to forgive them from the heart. Get your mind right and you get your heart right. We are warned if forgiveness is given too easily, it will be cheap grace. But that type of forgiveness is not from the heart. It cannot be cheap grace because it, if it's from the heart, it is from Christ and it is from his blood. It is from his resurrection. It is bought with the most precious price. We are not the redeemer. We are redeemed. We are bought with a price and Jesus Christ will change your whole life. We are called to pass on the good news that his death purchased atonement for all sins. Every transgression has been paid for. Jesus says, run, tell that to all your enemies, that the blood of Jesus has paid for all the sins of the world. And this forgiveness is for you, it's for me, it's from the endless love of God. And we now can forgive from the heart. Christ says in our text, so also my heavenly father will do every one of you. If you do not forgive your brother from your heart, if you are unable to grant forgiveness to others, it shows that your own heart has not experienced God's forgiveness. I know everyone in here has experienced God's forgiveness in their life. God will transform your heart, which will result in a changed life. We will be able to offer mercy and forgiveness through the grace of God. If we find ourselves harboring bitter feelings towards someone, that we have forgiven. If you've forgiven them, why are you still mad at them? You have to work on aligning your, your thoughts with the gospel. That is called a sanctification issue. That is a sanctification matter. Let the Holy Spirit work within us on this journey. Receive the Holy Spirit into your heart. To forgive, we must receive forgiveness for ourselves. Come to the Lord's Supper. Receive holy absolution. Come to the house of the Lord to hear the gospel preached. The word of the Lord is always accompanied by the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who is molding our hearts to be more loving, to be more forgiving. Psalm 51.10 says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Give me a clean heart so I may serve thee. Lord, fix my heart so that I may be used by thee, for I am not worthy of all these blessings, but give me a clean heart and I will follow thee. 
Martin Luther King Jr. says, forgiveness is not just an occasional act. It is an attitude. We may know what it looks like to forgive our family and our friends, but what does it look like to have our sins forgiven? In this world of, of pain, in this world of all the suffering, there is one way for us to receive forgiveness from dishonest acts and wrongdoings. It is through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is in him that we have the opportunity for new life. It is through Jesus Christ we have the opportunity to step out of the life of sin and step into the life of gracious forgiveness. It is in and with and through Jesus Christ that we have the opportunity to forgive from the heart. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all our human understanding, guard our hearts and guard our minds in Christ everlasting. Amen.